Hi everyone, it's Kim and Jennifer from Fleece and Harmony Wool and Mill coming at ya. Belfast PEI. Yeah. Don't go shoot. <laughs> It's one of those days. We're yeah. a little delirious. Today. Yeah, of course we are. We're always delirious. <laughs> one of us was knitting until ten minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> just to have a finished object. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dedication. We had it said enough to the no more finished objects. So we actually have a finished object today. Yeah. Again, a real one. Yeah. Well, um, well sure. so, okay. Um, so today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the coconuts book, the workshop, because I started that project and I know some of you have been uh, doing homework and we've gotten comments that you're doing homework, just waiting to, to get it started. So I'm going to just tell you, um, what I've, uh, what I've done to get ready to start. So um, we'll do that, and Jennifer's going to talk about her shawl that she finished, the Virgo. Uh, we've got a little bit of a farm update. Winter's coming, so we have to get ready for winter. We'll tell you what we have to do for that. And, uh, of course, we've got a couple stories that were, that came up because of different things that happened this week. Because <laughs> we're just always... Having stupid stuff happen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's just been crazy. And we haven't talked about knit night last night right. because we always talk about the baked goods, but last was night was different. especially weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we'll don't talk to you about that. So without further ado, we're going to show the, the or sorry, without further ado, we're going to go right to the farm update. So it's uh, November 8th. When you're watching this and uh the weather has been pretty good but we do know winter is coming and there is a, they actually are calling for snow on friday we I heard think. the s word first time yeah first time of course and the first time i decided to listen to the radio news in the morning in like six months snow right. was on it yes of course that's the way it would be <laughs> so that now you're gonna bury your head under the blankets yeah. again and yeah. listen to the news <laughs> that's right <laughs> so, so snow is coming but it'll probably be rain, to be honest. That's the, yeah, okay. that's the island. Yeah, which is actually not as good for the sheep. It, if it would be really drop below freezing and be snow, they stay dry. If it's just kind of cold and rot and rainy and windy, then they get wet they can and get wet. They, uh, they can be, be cold. So we have to make sure right. that we have shelter. So what we do for the sheep for the winter is, first of all, we have, um, I don't know, four miles of uh hose. I don't know how many kilometers of hose around the farm because we have uh water automatic water is in all of our fields and we actually have enough hose to reach every field so we have 88 acres and uh, it doesn't go all the way back to the 88 acres but we can go pretty far with the with the hoses and we've got um frost free, free hydrants around the farm in different part outside of different buildings so we're able to um, do, do automatic watering which is great because that means that you just need a relatively small water basin basin to to feed them in it or to keep them watered and they just drink and then it fills and drinks and fills automatically so <laughs> that's really good in the summer but as soon as it starts to freeze at night, then the hoses can get ice in them and then they start to split. So that's not really good. So this time of year, we start gathering up all the hoses and then we have big watering troughs, which have heaters in them. And then we have to place those out in the fields where the sheep are. So and then you have to run electrical cords. Yeah, then you run electrical cords. Place the hoses with electrical cords. Yeah, and then we have to haul water. Yeah, haul water. The yeah. horses in particular drink a lot of water. Yeah, but we have a really good trick for that. We don't have water tanks per se, but we have big, I don't know how many gallons with that, those big buckets. Barrels. Big barrels. They're barrels. I don't yeah, know. barrels. And if you line them with a big construction clear plastic garbage bag, you can fill them almost to the top. Then you tie a knot in the top of the garbage bag. This is in the back of the pickup. And then you can drive your pickup or the wagon. Right. We have a way, uh, like several aluminum wagons. wagons. Yeah. yeah. And because we don't have a tractor. Mm -hmm. So you can drive to the fields and the water doesn't spill out. So that's a pretty good trick. It only took us six years to figure out that odd spelling part. Yeah. Otherwise, we were just filling them up two thirds Halfway, of the way. And it was, you know, creating wave motion, which, uh, what, um, which Slash perpetuates it. itself and the waves get bigger and it all goes over the side and yeah. you lose half of what you bought and then the tra the trailer's all iced up and then someone slips on it and then yeah. you create a big ice flow where, where the horses are trying to walk with their little hard feet. Yeah. 
not good. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. But the uh, garbage bag in the in, yeah. in the barrel works really well. So that's what we. That's the fun that we get to look forward to. So there should be some good stories. Coming Winter out of water that. is, and that's when your shoulders just get killed. And mine's yeah. already sore from uh, knitting. Not yeah. good. Anyway. Yeah. So that's one thing that we get ready for. We also um, will start feeding our haylage. So the stored hay that we have that uh, has been. Stored it's since fermenting. The it's been fermenting it's fermented. since yeah. the first week of July or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So then we start once the the temperature is steadily around zero, then we can start. We get, can open it up and then start feeding it because yeah. it uh, it can spoil if you open it while the weather is warm and you're not consuming it quick enough. Yeah, so. and we use haylage because it's easier to dry off in this. It doesn't have to be as dry when you put it up, which is right. tricky because it rains here, although not anymore. Yeah. Used to. <laughs> uh, and it's stored in plastic, rolled like giant, it looks like giant marshmallows. And yep. uh, that way you don't need a building big enough to store your entire winter full of dry hay. Right. Dry hay would have to be stored in a building. Yeah. Dry hay can combust in a building. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. Yeah. If it's left in there damp, but believe it or not, it can combust. Yeah. Google it. Creates it's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's kind of why we do it that way. Right. And you, yeah, it's the drying off that's so that's hard. So we yeah. feed dry hay for as long as the weather is going up over zero. Then we start feeding haylage, and hopefully we have dry hay on the other end of the season, so that uh, we don't we have finished the haylage, and then we start dry hay again when the temperature mm -hmm. is fluctuating. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to the animals have to consume it pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so. just for people who don't farm and would have no idea, haylage is slightly riskier to feed because it is a fermentation process that you have to know what you're doing, kind of like yeah. if you're preserving food and it can get um, bugs and things in it similar to canned goods that yeah. uh, can be quite detrimental to the animals. So luck right. luckily we have a haylage genius doing ours for us yes. <laughs> uh, and we have no worries, but things can go wrong. Crows can poke holes in the plastic and yeah. all that kind of thing. But if you can't use dry hay, then that's what your option is. Yeah. And it is much more convenient for most people here on the island to yeah. use haylage. Yeah, and it, it um, tends to be uh, a little bit richer. Yeah. Too, because uh, you are able to make haylage um, because it doesn't have to dry out as much as dry hay, you can leave like a lot of clover and broadleaf uh, plants in it. Legumes in it, yeah. Legumes, which are, which are great for protein for the sheep. So. Yeah, so it's all a trade-off. But you need to have somebody that knows what they're doing make it. Yeah, and you have to take good care of it. So yeah. No holes in the plastic. And yeah. we wrap ours very, very thoroughly to yeah. make sure that it's well protected. Yeah, that's right. So that's the, uh, it's, yeah, it's just like preserving. Yeah, basically like if you had a hole in your can. Yeah you're in trouble. Yes. There's a hole crazy. in your haylage wrapper, same deal. Yeah. So then, uh, so that's that. So, you know, more fun, <laughs> fun, fun in every season. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh that's yeah. Fun. The cycles of fun. Yeah. It just continues <laughs> on and on. Yeah. So that's about, we've been doing this for, yeah, for, yeah seven years. So no problem. Just how long so it took us to figure out the bag in the garbage barrel. Yeah. <laughs> For the little water. Live and learn. Okay. Yeah. Every day is a school day. We're always evolving. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> always moving forward. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so that's about it. And then, do uh, you want to talk about midnight now? Well, last sure. Night. So last night was midnight, and I don't know, it's a weird vibe. It's dark when everyone gets here. Yes, because we've now moved from daylight savings time yeah. to standard time. I never know which is why. Yeah, I have I no idea. Time. It's anyway. an hour... Dark yeah. an hour earlier. That's right. what I know. Okay, right. it's dark at five. The sun is supposed to be up an hour earlier, yeah. and but it's dark at five o'clock. Yeah. So everyone kind of rolled in. A few people have trickled off. I think it's like a long way to drive in the dark. Driving at night in PEI is a whole yeah. thing. We'll have to talk about another time because yeah. it's really black. Yes. Like there's no light. Yes, in there's some of the spaces <laughs> in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. you kind of have to know where you're going, and it's like the high beams and the whole yeah. yards, and it's just twisty and I don't know it's not my favorite thing Country so roads. a lot of people don't like driving and night driving by the fence posts as they say yeah so um everybody sort of rolled in mm -hmm. and uh we, <laughs> we had yummy treats which yeah. I forgot to take a picture of I'm just realizing I didn't oh. post anything from knit night oh. last night we were completely yeah, was out of it Cranberry, so we all shortbread. Yeah, it was so delight. good. Coconut lemon cranberry bars or something. Yeah, uh -huh. and so we all showed up with our projects. Yeah. So I sat down for about five minutes and ripped a good 
three hours of mine out and decided to redo it. But start at midnight with ripping. Yeah, more (laughs) more on that later because that's part of my Virgo story. Yeah. And then what did you do? You. (laughs) I was defined. I'm progressing along with the back of my Joe Bat's arm, which is. I like seriously. I, <laughs> Rachel said to me, "I think you've been knitting that for as long as I know." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but not quite, but almost. Anyway, I am like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel now. So I'm knitting along, and as you know from the last episode, I'm feeling quite confident now with all those cables, and I'm knitting it with the pattern because it's still kind of tricky. But not having, I was very proud of myself uh, two weeks ago because I knit a big bunch of it during knit night and didn't have to rip anything out. So gab, gab, gab. Oh my God, these cranberry lemon coconut bars are delicious. Wait a second. How come my, <laughs> my, how come my alternating skein strand is on the wrong side of the work? So somewhere in the middle of one of my rows, I had pro- I put down my knitting probably to get a square. Yes, definitely. And then picked it up and then started mm-hmm. knitting in the wrong Reverse direction. Reverse direction. Yeah, in the middle of the row. You'd think it wouldn't be possible, but it's. I, right. do, I used to do it all the time. Because I couldn't really, you couldn't even see on the right side of the work where the mistake was, just the way that the pattern goes. But I was worried that there was a big debate then about if I should rip it out or not or keep going. Do you think you can notice it? But I was really worried with that pattern that I would get two or three rows up and then go, oh, well, yeah, shoot. you've got an extra half a row somewhere if you did that. Yeah. I mean, there's no... And then... Okay, so you ripped out everything that you got done. Knit backwards because I didn't want to rip you with all those. You had to take it. Yeah. Simone was spinning. She was fine. Yeah. She seemed kind of on the ball. She was always <laughs> she was the control. only one. <laughs> and then Rachel knit a heel turn and then had to rip that out. Yeah. So she left where she came. Well, she started with another project. Oh, okay. She but she that. forgot her pra- pattern. <laughs> so that didn't work out. <laughs> and then Jolene was trying to put a ball in the Nostapin. Yeah. So we had a novice Nostapin user. <laughs> and that all got tangled. Yeah. And she just looked depressed. And it took her the whole knit night <laughs> to, do, to wind one ball. But we reassured her that it goes faster. Once you get the hang yeah. after, okay, yeah, sure. it was quite kind of a fine yarn anyway, she was doing. Okay, but, so we yeah. were all just. But she had the perfect little avocado shaped thing. ball yeah, when she finished, which we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna show you some stuff. About so the we got n- nobody got anything done, and I in fact had less done when I left than when I arrived, <laughs> yeah. much less. Yeah, we had fun though, which I had to do last night late and this yeah. morning early. The and only until now, the only one that was truly disappointed at knit night was Ken after knit night. Because we were all so, we gobbled up all those squares. There was only a couple left for him. He usually likes to savor them. No, we ate them all. I must have had eight. Yeah. (laughs) They were really really good. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't concentrating on what we should have been concentrating. I don't know what we were doing. It was a weird one. We were all a bit off. So that was knit night. That was good. Everybody was kind of tired. Yeah. You kept complaining about your... I know. Rachel and I have extreme muscle soreness. But again, should I should I talk about it now? So Rachel and I decided to go to bar class, which is like a trendy thing now. You go and you stand at like a ballet bar and you do ballet yeah, style not to make drinks. Not, not to make classic. drinks. No. <laughs> bar B A R R E. Right. So I don't really need to leave the farm for exercise, but when the winter comes, I like to try to add some activities just to make it more enjoyable. Hmm. I don't want to say go faster because I don't want to wish my life away, but, you know, like add some flavor to your life. So we thought we'd start doing this bar class Sunday mornings at 11. We rolled up Sunday morning at 11. Who's never done this before? Just us two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's doing a lot of squats with the bar in mostly position one and two if you've ever danced Mm -hmm. Um, because anything beyond that I think we would have probably teetered over and uh, you know being prideful women we Mm -hmm. made sure we didn't miss a single rep yeah kept up with the whole class at one point I was supposed to be on my toes I was flat footed and Rachel actually yelled at me to get my (laughs) heels up which was shocking So I thought, oh boy, okay. So we we did the whole thing. By the end of it, I walked out. My legs were like jello. I actually didn't think I was going to make it to the car. And half about halfway through, Rachel said, you're going to have to call Kim to come pick us up. <laughs> because I don't know if I can drive. <laughs> and can you tell her to bring Ken? Because he's going to have to drive my car back. <laughs> so it was terrible. So anyway, but you know, we were like, oh, we go home, relax, whatever. Well, I'm still so sore. That was oh, yeah. on Sunday. It's Tuesday afternoon now. I can't yeah. walk down the stairs. Yeah. Anyway, 
So I can't crouch down. I can barely go downstairs. So all that squatting means that you no longer can I squat. I can't squat at all. <laughs> so usually when I light my propane burner under yeah. the dye vat, I would squat down next to it. And you know, my head is erect and it's far away from the burner. So right. I thought, well, I can't do that. And I'm liable to fly, fly, fall into it. <laughs> so I just bent over it and lit it and it caught my hair. And my hair went up. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost like a bunch of bangs here. Yeah, I which can see. Yeah, then I had like a little frazzly fringe left where it had just melted. So I had to pull all that out so that I didn't have like a little mustache here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's been quite a hazard. Uh -huh. So we're gonna go again. This you didn't Sunday. smell too good either. No, it's burnt stuck hair. burnt hair. Like yeah. I literally lost like a whole lock. Yeah. yeah. Up. And boy, it goes fast. And I, I came running out. And I was like, am I bald? Do <laughs> you don't have eyebrows? Yeah. Was that the part I was supposed to be telling? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. anyway, so we get to midnight and I'm like, someone's going to have to lift the chair up to our butts so that we can sit on it. <laughs> and neither one of us can move. And I'm sure she's not any better today than I am because it's yeah. actually worse. Yeah. Uh, two days later. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we have to keep going now because that can never happen again. Right. Or we could have right. taken a break, you know. It's... I was thinking of the expression that we're working like our hair's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. My hair was on fire. Yeah. I lit my hair on fire. Yeah. Is that the expression? Going like a house on fire. Yeah. Okay. But I think there's something about your hair is on fire too. Yeah, your hair running, is on fire. Running your stress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, mine was literally on Liter fire. Literally. I have less hair. So We're that. more literal than that around here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was bar class. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah. And then speaking about your hair, Jennifer has a hidden secret about her hair. Oh, I, I've already told them many times that my head's okay. all shaved at the back. Yeah, so Jen, she asked me to shave it. This yeah, week. because I hope really Lynn's not watching this, but I didn't really have time to go in for a hair appointment and it really, I just needed my bald spot rebalded back here so that, it, you know, Peter Brampton, that whole thing. Yeah. And uh, so Sorry. I thought, we had dog clippers, so yeah. we just got Kim to do it. Unfortunately, all of a sudden, a few long pieces fell out as well. <laughs> so I was under Now I have orders. less. Yeah. It's done. You can't tell. You've got plenty. Hmm. Mine is starting to thin. I know. Oh, that's what it was. You did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Sisters. Yeah. No, we didn't do it on purpose. I was brave to even let you. I know. No, I trust you. My eyes just about <laughs> popped out of my head when I saw it in the... She was standing in the bathtub, just in my bathtub, and when I when I went zoop, and I saw this big thing, <laughs> oh, God. I was like, that oh, was there's no hiding it. There's no hiding it. There's no it just hiding fell in the tub. It, so. Yeah, you were supposed yeah. to stick to the template, the yes. part that was already shaved. So as it turns out, I have much less hair than I did two weeks ago. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. So <laughs> dried fast. Yeah. And then you burnt the front of it. Yeah, that's right. right. So um, I think we should uh, get do talk about some knitting. Okay. Because you finished your project. Yeah. So sort of. in typical me fashion, um, well, I'll take it off. I have this lovely jewel circle brooch, which I love because this is a nice modern eyelet mm -hmm. kind of design this is by ash alberg and uh, it's called virgo and it was a part of a collection that they did for all the zodiac signs and i'm not a virgo but this was the one that was designed in our yard so of course this is the one i knit Elden lace in case you're wondering virgo isn't even my moon sign that sagittarius so oh, okay. very into astrology around here <laughs> we're all a bunch of witches as some, i like to some say some of us are yeah in <laughs> astrology oh, well a lot of us at midnight yeah <laughs> so this is it and it's quite a large rectangle yeah. shawl i still have the fringe to add but what happened was somebody told me that they maybe thought there wasn't quite enough yarn in two balls to finish it so then i got nervous and i decided to end it early so i actually ended it two repeats early i had bound it off oh i can see yeah because okay. it's not blocked that section yeah. so i ended it here because I was nervous. The balls looked small. I was too lazy to come out and weigh them and see mm -hmm. what was really going on. So I basically bound it off and applied the fringe in part on the bound off edge. Then I got to knit night and got an attack of the guilties. <laughs> I had cut all the what I needed for the fringe off and still had two balls this big. And I'm like, I could have done the full 20 repeats. Right. So I sat down and we all discussed it. And I hemmed and hawed and hemmed and hawed and then thought, this is never going to fly with me. I cannot stand not to have done the whole thing perfectly. Right. And so I ended up ripping out the fringe at midnight, <laughs> undoing the bind off, starting over, and then I did the two additional repeats right. to get to the 20. I redid the border. Like yeah. I literally finished this 10 minutes ago, and now I just have to re-block 
block yeah. it and add the fringe. So I'm going to add, it's quite a long fringe that makes mm -hmm. it really nice that goes on this. We love fringe. But you know, you just can never fudge it. Like yeah. I, I was just like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just end it early. And I wasn't happy with the length and I couldn't get it blocked out to the specification. And you did have enough yarn. And I had yarn left over and I was trying to just be done with it and leave it how I had done it and move on with my life, but I just can't. So yeah. I undid all that and I thought pulling out mohair fringe, that sounds like a barrel of monkeys. It actually wasn't that no, bad. It went pretty slick. Actually. And uh, then I had to like hobble back to the house to get my needles because I hadn't even brought those out with me. All I had was a crochet hook and I literally can barely walk. Yeah. Like it's that bad. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I have to go upstairs and get them. Anyway, I got it back on the needles and and got it finished properly now so I just have to add the fringe and which I've already got all cut and everything yeah. and um, the way I did the fringe to measurement was I found a book that was the right circumference oh, for the length okay. I needed I wrap it around the hardcover book and then I cut oh, in between okay. the two covers with the scissors and it makes oh. them really super even oh okay. so that's a really good way to measure out fringe if you're thinking how in the name of God am I gonna measure 360 yeah. pieces 15 inches long well that's yeah. what you do find something and wrap it around kind of like how when you make a pom-pom right and then just cut yeah it and works perfectly it's perfect because you've got a there's a space. lace yes yeah, yes. yeah. Right. so that's how i did fringe so, so i've got fringe <laughs> fringe <laughs> <laughs> so uh the other really good lesson of this whole thing was about weighing your yarn so we had a big discussion yeah. about at night about weighing your yarn so you know, if you find um, yourself in that situation where you need to, um, you're not sure how much, you can actually knit a repeat, then weigh, weigh your balls, knit a repeat, and then re-weigh your balls, and then you'll know exactly how much weight you'll yeah. need to finish or how many repeats you can do. You have to think about that a little bit ahead so uh so that you can uh, that you're able to do it, and then you wouldn't you wouldn't have to worry. You'll know exactly. Yeah. Okay. Small break to fix the lighting because the sun <laughs> was sinking and creating all kinds of shadows. Yes, I should have realized when I started squinting automatically that, that yeah, there probably was going to be a problem. Something so we're back now. Hopefully, right. look better. Okay. All right. Uh, so where were we? I don't know. I had just yeah. talked about the Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> what were and we I doing? think that's it. And okay. You just put this back on. Oh yeah. And it's just gonna go like this, so you can see that. Yeah, so yeah. now we're going to um, talk about the talk, moose cap. Yeah, the moose cap. So we've been selling the kits. Yeah. And this is the original one. So Janet, the the uh, gal that helps us out in the mill, um, really loves her Saltwater Classics book. Right. So she's been knitting furiously. She's made like eight of them or something. Yeah, anyway, so as you recall, we had the moose cap. Right. And then we had a cute little idea. So I mentioned last episode that we had made a little tiny bit of marled yarn at one point, and this is it. Yeah. Um, and it's that not, was like a long time ago. Yeah, like way in the beginning. And yeah. it's not one we made for Janet no. at Green Gable Law Pack, because it's actually a little bit of odds and ends. We decided to make it for ourselves. Yeah, just, with our brown wool. Yeah, I thought I would make socks out of it. Would have been mm -hmm. really nice. But then it, because I was like, oh, we'll use that little bit of marled yarn. So Janet made this, but look what she did. Yeah. She did a little one of the moose in red with duplicate stitch, which yeah. was her idea, which we thought was so cute. So we just wanted to show it. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty hard to do in Tarja in the round. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, or impossible. I don't know what you would have had to do, to be mm -hmm. honest. I don't even think and keep going I don't, back even, I don't know. Yeah. That's too much for me to figure out right yeah. here on the spot. Lots of ends to tie. Yeah, so she just did it in duplicate stitch. And yeah. this was her first time doing duplicate stitch, but I think yeah. that's so cute. Yeah. Probably cuter for Canadians right. because we're red, red, white. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll sort of get it a little bit more than uh, maybe some other countries yeah. in terms of what, what that means to us. But yeah. uh, super cute mm -hmm. treatment on the moose cap. Yeah. So that was just a fun thing we wanted to show you. A little bit of inspiration if you want to do it a slightly different way. Yeah. It was really funny. It was cute. Okay, All right. wonderful. So yeah. we're on to cocoa knits. Yeah, so for those that have ordered your cocoa knits uh, workshop <laughs> book, and uh, I read, I, we've got messages that people have read them from cover to cover as well, so it's really interesting. So the first step for me was to really figure out, I wanted to really um, understand the fit. Like I've been talking about fit now because obviously I was so impressed with some of those sweaters and knitties. <laughs> it's made a big impression on me. Mm -hmm. So today I'm wearing a sweater which was not knit by me. It's just that it's really old. I bought it a long time ago. In fact, I think one of the beads fell off it. So there's a little bit of a thread here, but maybe you won't notice it. Can I just point something out? What? Because this is like the coral 
flame red and burgundy that I was trying to get you to do your Joe Bats <laughs> Armin, and everybody thought I was nuts. But it's all here in this sweater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Just saying. Sort of. I mean, I like the color scheme you've picked now, but I right. wasn't completely out to lunch. Like, no. It's juicy. Yes, yes. And this sweater is, I wore this a lot when I first bought it, but it's kind of weird because it's seamed up the front. Right. Which I guess is a design feature, but I, you know, my logical, you know what bothers me about it. Yeah, and the stripes don't even match. Right. I'm surprised <laughs> that you can, I'm surprised you're functioning right now. Okay. I know, but I had to mention it because it always, it always bugged me, but I thought, oh, for Pete's sakes, don't be so uptight, just wear it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of a weird Well, I think that must be the idea. I mean, like, I, well, that yeah. clearly has to be intentional. Yeah. Okay. Some designer feature. You're off kilter. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I, I am uh, wearing this sweater because the sweater that I chose to do from the Coconuts workshop is um, a similar shape. Similar shape. And Which, it is a good tip in fitting to go to something that you already own that fits you. I know Andrea from Fruity Knitting and says that so often. And so does Julie. Okay, for measuring, yeah. if you're doing something for a gift, right. you know, for somebody, and it's a secret, I don't know how you'd ever get away with that if you lived in the same household with someone with the number of hours it would take you to knit a sweater yeah. in secret, but... Um, you know, just have them pick out one that they mm -hmm. like and then you can go from there, right? And in fact, I took the time to try on a couple sweaters mm -hmm. just to know. So I chose Emma and um, I'm just going to show a picture of Emma without, um, without the pattern on it. So uh, uh, it's this one. You can just hold it yeah. towards the camera a bit. Okay. So it has a, a V-neck and it's a little bit croppy, but um, the way that this whole thing works is you can adjust the length and everything. So I won't make it as short as this. And it has long sleeves. It's very much the shape of this, mm -hmm. of this sweater. Good call. Yeah. So, uh, so that's why I dug this out and tried it, tried it on. And in fact, I forgot exactly how this was until I put it on because I was actually, it felt like wearing red lipstick today, but I didn't want to wear, most of my red sweaters are quite, um, are quite wintry, like wintry. Then I thought of this and I put it on, I'm like, well, for Pete's sakes, it's exactly, right. it's exactly. It's wonderful to have that because yeah. it's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in a heavier weight yarn. Yeah, and as it's well. even got a little bit of a bell sleeve, which I really like. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about the whole thing because you, you method. You <laughs> the, need whole, to, the whole, the whole method. Have the book. But um, I will tell you that there's a section in here that talks about your body shape, and it's about the proportion, not necessarily about the size. So it doesn't matter like what your what your your size is it's really about the proportion of your body so there's um top heavy middle heavy and bottom heavy the three sections of your body and um, she gives really good hints about things that you should do if you're top heavy if you're middle heavy and if you're bottom heavy luckily for me the recommendations are similar for top heavy and middle heavy because i have both i'm kind of roundish <laughs> But my, I have quite slim hips and thighs for the size of my upper part. So top, top heavy, but from the waist all the way. None, none of us have hips in our family. No. Or thighs. No. Which is why bar class is so difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so luckily it's about, the, it's the same kind of thing. And one of the things that it says almost in the first of it is the neckline. A V which, neck. You know what I love is that you always have said... You like open necklines. You yes. know, you love the neckline on that little cape flip yeah. we showed way back when, yeah. and like an open neckline. And now it's like confirmed. Yes. And, you know, it's not just you. It, it's it is more flattering, and you right. have that sort of confirmed. Right. Because so. I have a fairly short neck, pretty short actually. So this <laughs> is that, but it's a, it. She's not talking about the length of your neck. She's actually just talking about the shape of your upper body. Yeah. So so that's it. And um, the other thing is, is that you want your garment to hit you at the place where you're the slimmest. So whatever that is. So because I have no hips, obviously that's across the hips. So for me, 
going, having something end across the hips is perfect because it brings the eye down to the, the smallest part of my proportion. And the other thing trick you can use is the cuffs of your sweater should also hit in that area. So um, there's a picture of me standing with this sweater on with uh, just a pair of pants that I'm wearing today. So you'll be, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. And um, the one thing you're not supposed to have is, is uh, horizontal stripes. So anyway, that's it. And you have to be careful about the bulkiness of the fabric that you're wearing on the top. So which put me a little bit in concern about my Joe Bat's arm last night, but we had a, we had a big discussion about that as well. But because I made it, um, the fabric uh, is blocked out because I, I uh, don't have as much ease in it as the pattern recommends, I think I'm going to be, I think it's kind of like fine. what I was saying about my Ahava last time too, is I wanted it to not be bulky. So I blocked it very aggressively and right. made it to fit. Right. Yeah. And so it thins the fabric out. Of course, you're stretching it. Yes. So. Yes, that's right. So uh, I think I'm, I'll be okay with my Joe Bat's arm, but this, this one, uh, this, um, top is going to be knit in a fairly heavy yarn as well, Which but, one? but it's per perfectly plain. You're doing it in worsted? Selkirk worsted. There's it suggests Aaron, so but I think I'll do it in my in the worsted. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to use the color Vineyard. Yes. Which is basically this color. Like a but, but I'll put a little picture up of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. So the shape is uh, it's really similar. So the really interesting thing and why I mean I've heard this before. It's not like I've never heard of this trying on a sweater and whatever before. But what's really interesting is. There's all kinds of tips in the book about how to adjust the pattern so that you have it even more um, customized to your body shape. And one of the things that it says is that you can bring the decreases up further if you're if you're you're middle heavy. You can uh, or middle large yeah middle heavy is that uh, you can bring your decreases uh, for the waist shaping just up a little bit higher. And then you can create a little bit of ease below, like where where mm -hmm. you would be, and that and that this sweater actually has that. Hmm. Perfect. So it's really interesting. I just happened. I had forgotten all about it. It's been so long since I wore it. So um, there's really like a lot of it matches all the things that they suggest. So I'm just gonna measure that. And this um, in the sweater, I think I would even uh, it might have been better just to have the decreasing the shaping from the sweater. Um, even a little bit higher than what it actually is, but you don't I don't want it really tight across my middle either and uh, I figured out how long I, I'm gonna how long I'm gonna knit it because it's fully adjust, adjustable the patterns in this as well so I did um, I Have my worksheet so there's a worksheet in the book and uh or there's the book of worksheets yeah. if you want to keep a journal, a knitting right. journal and a diary, which I think would be very, very helpful. Yeah. So on the the only thing it doesn't have on it is your actual measurements. So I took all of my measurements that match everything that's measured out in the schematic of the pattern. And uh, there's no surprise to me that my bust area is actually the large size. So there's... Um, I don't know if it, yeah, it must be just, it starts with small, medium, and large, and then it goes up from there. I'm the large size for the bust, but my hips and waist are actually um, the medium size. So I will be doing adjustments with the worksheet, plus or minus decreases, to have this fit a little bit better. There's some ease, um, there's some ease in the schematic for around the waist. Um, I think when I took my measurement, my waist was actually 34 and the pattern is a 38 and a half waist. So what I'll do is I will um, make that a little bit smaller because I don't want uh, four and a half inches of, of ease there and I'll nip it in a little bit higher up. And then the hips are also, my hip uh, measurement was 39 and a half and the, I think the pattern was like 40, 40, I want to say was it 48 I can't remember exactly but it was too it's going to be too big as well so I'll just I'll just reduce and you know and the, the worksheet um, gives you a space where you do plus 
plus one, plus two, plus three, well, however many stitches you need, you need to know your gauge. So we won't talk about gauge swatches because we beat that, you know, to death, but um, you need to know what your gauge is and then you'll, you'll be able to figure out what the pluses and minuses are. Cool. So you're so, in the planning phase right now. Yeah. So yeah. I'm done right. with the planning phase. Okay. Um, on the worksheet, there's a place for you to write everything that you need to know. So if you wanted to reproduce the sweater that you're doing or make adjustments, you know exactly where, what you did, what needles, mm -hmm. the weight of your yarn, all of those, all of that stuff, when it was started, when it was completed. It's really like a diary. Cool. A, a I love knitting it. diary. So yeah. we'll be talking through each step of the way as we go. Yeah. So the, all of the sweaters are top down in the round. So you do the kind of a funny thing in the construction at the beginning, like doing the shoulder shaping and stuff. And then after that, it's in the round. So um, that you can try it on and you can make sure that you have the perfect That's fit. That's always helpful. Yeah. If you don't know your body. So well. um, yeah. I'm ready to cast on. Sweet. Yeah. Great. So that's, that's it. And I did, did, this is more planning than what I would normally do for, uh, for a sweater. I usually kind of do it on the fly. I do all of these things, but on the fly, but now I'm really hoping that I can have a, a real success, uh, with yeah. this, like as far as, so what yardage do you need? Do you know that? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it was around 950 okay. yards Perfect for the large, right? That was an errand. So I just have to ch check the yarn that they used. If it matches our worsted weight or our, what we call our errand right. weight. Okay. So, Perfect. Yeah. So that's it. It's on eight millimeter needles. So. Wow. That's going to be good. You'll yeah. go fast. Yeah, okay, go great. Fast. Cool. Yes. So, uh, so it was actually fun doing all this because when you see how, you know, it all works out. Yeah. And then I was really lucky because I found this one. <laughs> yeah. And then it just gives you a lot of confidence to, and you know, you get to know your, your shape. Like there's a lot to learn in, in yeah. all of this. What's flattering, you know, nothing's yeah. hopeless. You can adjust things. Yeah. You can really learn, um, to knit for your own body, which yeah. is something that you really need to do if you want to have right. a good result for anybody. Nobody matches the designer specifications right. perfectly. I mean, that yeah. would be like impossible. Right. And the, um, the interesting thing about, uh, about my upper arm, cause you're always talking about your upper arm is much bigger than the, what your size, your overall size would be. Mine is actually smaller. So Cause we have skinny limbs. Yeah. Cause our limbs are thin, but my shoulders are w quite wide. Yeah. Like I'm, nobody would say that I don't have broad, like yeah. <laughs> broad through the, through the top, but my upper arms are, um, are, uh, are actually smaller. So I'll, right. I'll make the, I'll do them a little bit thinner yeah. in the sweater. Well, too. relative to your size, cause I am. Like my bones are like the tiny bone structure. Yeah. So it's just relative to my bone structure right. up here. I, yeah. I'm bigger than you would expect. Yes. But I, have all, I also do a lot of yoga and plank and stuff and that doesn't help. Like yeah. I, I've always tended to get bigger through here, nowhere else. Trust me, yeah. I could build my legs up. Because it looks like I'm riding a chicken. Yeah. That's basically what my upper body is riding a chicken. That's it. That's what it looks like. I'll never, I'll never forget that when I, was, when I was in university, I used to swim. So I went to Dalhousie University. If there's anybody out there from Dalhousie and Halifax. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Okay. And I used to swim every morning. So I would go to work with mom because she worked at the, at the hospital close by, right on the, almost right on the university campus. Well, it was on the university campus, yeah. basically. And uh, I would go swim for an hour, and uh, I'll never forget. I was, uh, you know, Halifax is pretty famous for the number of bars and stuff that are downtown. The nightlife is quite, yeah. you know, seven universities in a right. small there's city. There's a lot of drinking. Yeah, there's quite a lot of drinking, water and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stay hydrated. Yeah, stay hydrated. Anyway, I'll never forget that I was swimming for about. Well, not that long. Like it was maybe a month and a half or two months. And this friend of mine that I knew quite well, I ran into him at the at the bar, and he uh, he said, "Oh, Kim," and he gave me a big hug. And he goes, "Jeez," he said, "He said, I don't think I'd want to meet you in a dark alley." <laughs> <Which is> just <laughs> exactly what you want to hear. <laughs> I felt so feminine. <laughs> I said, "What?" It's overrated. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I always, yeah. It went fast. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, of all things, try to put some shape in our yeah. legs. You can forget it. But yeah. Up here, always. Yeah. It went really yeah. fast. Anyway, that was it. So then I stopped swimming. Yeah. Now I wouldn't stop swimming. 
Gosh, no. But then I did. So that would have been like, what, in the 80s? I know. You know what's funny? I remember taking mom. I wanted to do martial arts. I was probably seven. And we went to the Northcliffe Recreation Center, which has since been torn down. Yeah. That was the recreation center, like, or the community pool in our mm-hmm. area. And we went to the kiosk, and she was going to pay because they have registration day, and you go pay in advance. And I, of all the things that have happened to me in the last 45 years, I have no idea why I remember this so clearly, but there's a <laughs> lesson here somewhere. Yeah. The person, the woman behind the desk said, you know she'll be the only girl in the class. Is that going to be okay? And I balked, and I, I, oh, and I never went. Oh, Huh. I never, I never went. I wouldn't go then. Huh. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. We look at how many girls are in judo, women, like yeah. whoever, right? Yeah. But that was it, and the woman made a point of it. Yeah. And I was literally seven, like yeah. not more. I wonder what would have happened if she didn't say that, and you would have went. I probably would have been embarrassed and never gone back. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know what? I always had my my best friends growing up were boys. Yeah. Jonathan and Stefan and yeah. like I hung out with the, my parents' Neighbors. best friends had three boys and yeah. we had three girls yeah. and so yeah mm-hmm. I don't know but I that I remember that very clearly I just yeah. I find it interesting that I remember it yeah well you never forget anything I forget lots now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do but <laughs> yeah. not from back then well no but it really I don't know it must have bothered me at the time like I think knowing there my personality. Bad. The minute I got home, I thought to myself, I should have Was that a reason not to go? Yeah. At seven? Yeah, maybe. No, no, no. Well, it's sad plucky. anyway. Anyway. It's sad. It is. It makes me so sad. I could yeah. have been an Olympic gold medal winner by now. <laughs> Canadians sure. do very well in judo. I don't know if you know. Right. And I personally have always wanted to kick boys' asses quite a bit. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I've been really handy over the years. I'm thinking. But I came in handy. <laughs> who knows who I might be? Okay. Yes. Anyway. Okay. We really digress. Okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we finished up the Coco Knits thing, so we'll stay tuned. And um, so are we officially doing a cow? Yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah, we said that okay. last time. Coco so, Knits thread. Have you opened it no. yet? No. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to open the Coco Knits thread. And uh, we can we can all chat in there. It'll be fun. Okay, I'm really excited. About this. I I would love to yeah, join in, but when it. you hear my plan, holy smokes! Yeah. Okay, Forget so it. now <laughs> that's the next thing on the agenda. Okay, Jen's plan. So I am going to cast on the new sock pattern from Ash Alberg, which they just released October thirty first, mm-hmm. and uh, I can honestly say I have no idea how to pronounce it. Do you know how to pronounce it? No, not a clue. Okay, it's down below. <laughs> Pronunciation is going to be a big problem later in this episode as well, just so you know. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, I I don't even... Is it named after a a type of rock or a a gem? I don't don't know know. what it is. I should have looked it up beforehand, but nonetheless, we'll put some information underneath. So I'm going to cast those on because I think they're just beautiful. Um, And Ash was kind enough to design them with our Point Prim sock yarn. And when that happens, I like to knit the thing. I mean, it makes sense, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, I haven't quite decided what color. I might do something crazy. Like what? Well, they're shown in seagull, but I'm thinking one of the brights. Yeah, I would. Do the, do caramel apple. All of them would be stunning. Like even the yellow, the scarecrow would be neat. Yeah. So then, so next, would you mind handing me, actually I'll grab it. So my next plan is what Rachel is now referring to as my Everest. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm super excited about it. And I really didn't want to bring this up during the summer because we were having so much trouble keeping up with the sock yarn that I thought my sister here might kill me. So, because it's double stranded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to use a ton of our sock yarn. We'll let Janet spin that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't care where it comes from. But basically, what I'm going to do is uh, Marled Mania by Stephen West. I love it because it's got the little thumb holes in it, and it, to me, it's like a yoga sweater, and I want to make my own yoga sweater, even though it'll cost 10 times what a one from Lululemon would cost if I would just go buy one or from wherever. Yeah. So um, if you're familiar with the pattern, it is the entire thing is marled, marled, which we've been chatting about for two weeks mm-hmm. now. So the main body I'm going to do with these two together. Okay. Marled, held double-stranded. Seagull and a night without stars. Yes. 
So that'll be sort of the merled body that you can see, because I'll put a picture up, of course. And then as I work through the section, I'm going to do our entire neon rainbow of colors. So okay. it'll be... The first stripe will be cherry slush and midway together. The second stripe will be midway and scarecrow together. Oh, okay. The third stripe will be scarecrow and caramel apple together. The okay. fourth one will be caramel apple and cotton candy. Oh. And then finally cotton candy and grape soda. Oh, okay. So it's going to be this lovely neon ra rainbow with the merled, navy, and gray background. Super excited. Okay. However, I have signed up for a test knit as well that I think starts sometime in the next couple days. So there's going to be a lot going on. So, but this will be so fun to follow mm -hmm. along. Like I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's a beautiful pattern, relatively tame. Mm -hmm. For Stephen, if you ask me. Um, well, we got stuck on those Swants things last <laughs> night. <laughs> Swants. <laughs> Swants. Stephen yeah. West. Yeah. Swants. Hilarious. Love him, so, but I've been dying to make something, and this is just the perfect project. <laughs> but you make all after <laughs> since I'll be finished with this sweater. You <laughs> can make the sweats. <laughs> They'd be stunning. You gotta love it. Like it was. You have just, to look at it. I didn't even get to see the Merle madness because I was just, no Merle mania. Oh, so my. I was kind of like picking, <laughs> out, picking out my fringe, and then I heard Rachel say, "Oh my goodness, he's made a cod piece out of a turtle." <laughs> <laughs> and I and I kind of had Michael, and I was. <laughs> looked up for my glass. It was a load of fun. <laughs> God love them. I mean, I just, I love it. Anyway, mm -hmm. this I think is going to be amazing. Right. And I don't think it will kill me like Everest. It is, but you know, I'm holding this double the whole time. I, I was hoping to have my gauge swatch done because it's really like an air and weight sweater, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, it's going to be the yardage. I mean, yeah. I don't know how warm it'll be, but I, <laughs> I, have to, I didn't even look at the sweater, so I don't Forget know. Forget wearing like. it to yoga. I could wear it to climb Everest yeah. by the time yeah. I put all this yeah, yarn into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, I just think, I mean, I'm sure you can all envision with me how amazing that's going to be in my head. <laughs> we'll see what it gets going. I have no idea Is how you like match how, the stripes up how on How amazing arms. I am at speaking French in my head? Right. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to be so proud to wear it. Yes. And I love the neon rape. Like, I'm just... I'm, yeah, you I'm, are hooked on those neon colors. I've wanted to do it for months, but I was afraid to mention it. It's actually a good, a good way to introduce some, those brights when you want oh, to have a whole... I can't wait. Limit. Yeah. I'm so excited, but I think it will take me a while to get through all these projects. Now, the yeah. socks I'll start right away tomorrow. Right. Um, and hopefully they go quickly because then I have to do this Jennifer Beale test now, which I'm super excited about. <clears throat> and it's an Aaron weight, um, so it should go yeah. pretty quickly too. But I have no idea. I mean, maybe I'll have all this done by... Have you done color work before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All yeah, the color work. Hats Sorry. And stuff. Yeah, no, but you, you all, not all over color work. Well, it's You've, not really all over. Because Aramia and Bereshwa both had color work. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's not more, it's one's more complicated, but it's only two colors. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Not eight. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so that's my big knitting plan for, I don't know, I don't know when that'll take me to finish all that merch. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> well, I don't know. How long have we known Rachel? You, oh, well, I'm slow. I'm slow. I'm just teasing you. Well, the socks. I mean, that can't take very long. How and then the sweater is going to have a deadline. Yeah. So a big flock of birds just flew by. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're, they're gathering. It's yeah. frightening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's my plan. Yay. I'm just so excited to use all the neon colors. We'll see you next spring. And Rachel and I have known about this plan for months, but we didn't want to mention it in front of Kim. <laughs> Why? Because the sock yarn situation was a little bit stressful over the summer. We were constantly running yes. out. Yes. And we so were then, running out of mohair. So then I wasn't going to be like, we're running out of sock yarn. I'm just taking 20 balls that I'm going to knit double stranded into one project. Mm -hmm. but, Is it really um, substantially better now? We yeah, don't, we don't it's, know. Go, it's good enough yeah. that I can get started. <laughs> okay. I have these two. This is <laughs> handing the other two that are there. I'm taking <laughs> everything that's there to start my marled part. Well, you're starting the socks first. I'm going to start the socks and I'm going to swatch for this because okay. it's double stranded and there's going to be a whole thing about, but it's made with quite a large needle too. Yeah. Okay. I think five and a half or something oh, yeah. like that. Okay. So, but I just love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that's my plan. That's my knitting plan. Okay. And I was going to start them. I hoped to have the swatch and the socks cast on for today, but this 
yeah. thing didn't come happen. to my mind. It's fine. Yeah. Next time, so there's we'll a, have progress on those. There's a uh, big mud puddle <clears throat> that I can see from the window, and there is literally 25, 30 birds all taking a bath. It's the cutest when they do that. Yeah, they're all splashing around muddy water bird hygiene yeah i love it okay yeah. so, <laughs> so that okay so now all right so uh now it's a shop update okay great so we have uh last time we talked about jewels the de jewel designs yeah. with the um the shawl pins and the penangular brooches yeah so we showed you some of them but we didn't show you all of them right and uh i think we showed this i one. showed this one yeah Which, this is a, probably the most modern it's perfect yeah. for this simple pattern. Yeah. So we have another penannular um, uh, brooch, I guess. I'm calling it a brooch, but it's a cl uh, clasp, obviously. R works the same way. We'll do the same kind of uh, pictures of, of them. And it's Monarch butterf Butterflies. So if anybody wants to, uh, I know there's a big butterfly culture. People like it, butterflies. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah, okay. and feeding the butterflies and butterfly oh, okay. gardens and everything. Oh, yeah, okay. So if you're a butterfly enthusiast, we have a penannular uh, brooch, um, which you might not have oh, noticed, man. but it's actually on the envelope beside oh, you. lovely. Yeah. I just like to play with them. Oh, okay. I find it very satisfying the way you turn it around. Yeah. Ooh, I just poked myself. They're sharp. Yeah, that one's sharp. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. You're getting really good at I'm it. I'm getting really good at it. Yeah. Okay. I love the butterflies. Lovely. So we'll yeah. put that up. Yeah. This one's already up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, there is another uh, another item which I'm just going to show here. So this is the uh, the hap shawl, the modified hap shawl. It's the large happy, size happy the large, shawl. Yeah. The large size happy shawl, which is a pattern you can buy uh, and here. And there's a kit. A there's yarn a kit. kit. Yes. yes. And um, just in case there's questions, it's bramble. Um, oyster and slate. Oyster, oyster and slate. Yeah. And this closure is one of the dual closures. And we'll show you a picture up close. But it actually works oh, like this. Oh, cool. Oh, you hadn't seen it before? <laughs> oh, everything's okay. new to me. Yeah. So you just put it down. Like, what What do you call that? Like carabiner. a carabiner? Or a carabiner. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that. And it's leather. But these leather tabs... Um, have screws in the back so you actually um, put the screw it's dull so you can fit it between your stitches so you're not piercing your yarn or anything and you just tighten it and then you position it whatever wherever it is that you want uh, want it positioned and then you then you just uh, rearrange it and create create a temporary closure that you can take off when yeah, you have Yeah, imagine, you can put it on anything. And there's yeah. a name for those kind of bolts, and I know because we use them to put the name plates on horse halters, yeah. but I can't remember what they're called right at the moment. But you just put the one side in the other, and it, it yeah. has a natural stop. Yeah. Like, you can't twist them super, super tight. Yeah. Um, they have, like, a width to them that's held. Gosh, I used to know what they were Makes called. Makes a little gap. Yeah. So it's not going to squish your right. name. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you won't, there's no fear of over-tightening them and not be able to get it off easily yeah, or anything that's like right. that. They're really so cool. So just to wash, or if you had one and you wanted to put it to on put something else. else. Like, yeah, because yeah, they're they're a little bit of an investment to get these closures because they're yeah. so well-made and they're with leather. and Yeah. And uh, we have the small, what's called the small oval closures, and uh, we have them in um, espresso, which is a, a brown, oh, sorry, I can't remember what the names of it. Anyway, it'll be there, but there's a brown and a black one. Right. So you can have, uh, and there's other ones, so um, we just don't carry them. We're just trying these out. Like yeah. I said, this was, we said last time, we test things out and see if we like it, how it works, yeah. how, you know, the quality of it, and this is a... Uh, this is really, and I hadn't found a use for these because they're a little bit heavier than the shawl. It has a different look than the shawl right. pins, yeah. for sure. Looks but, great on that, though. I know. Yeah. It, may, it makes it look like a like a jacket. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. So those are listed now. Yeah, so I those are uh, again. I'm really happy with Put it. Put it up a bit higher. Are you just doing it? Yeah. To do it? I know I'm putting it up higher. Okay. <laughs> it was right on my... <laughs> there. Okay. All right. Then we have the Coco Knits. Oh stitch yeah. So a big launch from Coco Knits on November 1st, the flight of stitch markers. Mm -hmm. When I saw this, I just was like, oh yeah. So it's got five different types of their stitch markers in. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's just everything they do, you know, we can't say it enough. So yeah. there's a little um, resealable box. They're all in here in their adorable yeah. little tubes. Yeah. 
So, and pretty compact. Yes. Yeah, for the so. amount of stuff you would be bringing with you. And yeah. you'll recognize all the basic shapes. These uh, rectangular ones are different than the rectangular ones we carry. Triangle. Triangle, sorry, yeah. At triangle because they're actually rainbow. Yeah. And the ones so, we have are black. Yes, and you black and white. Yeah. So you also, uh, I should mention that you, uh, the worksheet from the Coconut Coco Knits workbook actually has color coding for the different uh, stitch markers when you place them. Yeah, so, so you said that last time yeah. too, but yeah. oh, it just looks like sherbet. You yeah. know, I'm crazy about rainbows. <laughs> Oh God, did I just drop one? No, anyway, no. these are adorable and they're brand yeah. new and we yeah. have them in stock and they're already listed on our site. So pick up your, the only thing I feel like people are gonna be like, aw, I would have just got that in the first place. Oh, oh well, no, hopefully not. So they have the jumbo, which are pretty new. Chances yeah. are you don't have those. Yeah. The original and the small clothes ring, mm -hmm. the triangle, but they're rainbow, not mm -hmm. the black and white. And then the split, which yeah. are also fairly new. Right. Um, so if you've hesitated up to now to get coconut right. stitch markers, now you can get the bonanza. Yeah. It's like Halloween candy in here. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah. So oh, yeah, so those are up. Accessories, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was Halloween. We don't get any kids for Halloween. No, no. Uh, remind me to tell you a story. Our driveway is too long for Halloween. Yeah, okay. Our driveway is too long. But sometimes we get delivery to our pillow. I have a Halloween story. Okay. But we'll tell it at the end. Okay. I need to keep going. Okay. So oh. did we talk about Fox Mountain spindles last time? Yes. Because of the Nostapin. I think we mentioned it. Okay. So here is a, a sample of the ball. I showed my balls of yarn, I think, from yeah. my uh, Joe Bat's arm. So this is what it looks like when it's on the Nostapin. And uh, I just wound this as an example to show in the store. So we have the Nosta pins uh, for sale, and there's um, they're slightly different, but they're all they're basically the same. They all work the same way. Um, at some point, I'll oh, do a I little see. video. It just has a different end. Yeah, so it has a little bit of a different finished off. Differently. Yeah, just, yeah, but okay. they all work exactly the same yeah. way. Um, they fit. They just. The, I don't know what Scott does to the wood, but it's just it's so like well made yeah. and just feels so good Smooth in your hand and, and warm and organic in your hand. So the Nosta pin, these are the Nosta pins. They're so listed have, on the We have line. those. They're okay. listed. Then we have literally a couple of the yarn buddies. So once you have your, your, I have a cake in here that was done on a regular ball winder, but your Nostapin ball also creates, the Nostapin creates kind of a big, biggish hole. So you can, you, I had my balls for my Joe Bat's arm on, on this last night. So this is called the Yarn Buddy. Also feels Handmade, like Handmade, feels amazing. Yeah. And, oh, okay. <laughs> so maybe not that so, aggressive, but smooth as You can knit that fast. Yeah. So, so fun, like better yeah. than a yarn bowl. Yeah, and you can just, it's so well made. Yeah. The, the, um, there's bearings, bearings inside, inside there, which yeah. I think he's kind of got caught in the steel tariffs or something. He's, oh, really? He's telling me that. Okay. Anyway, but, these are amazing. I feel like I just, I love this. I want the, one. And the cat can't break it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or Not the dog. That's ever happened. Anyway, <laughs> they're really, uh, they're really well made. Um, and, uh, we have a couple of them and, but I can get more. Apparently. Yeah. So anyway, so we'll so put them up. It. I think there, there's one going up right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, if so you're... the, uh, it has little, uh, rubbery, those soft feet. rubber feet on the bottom so that it's so not going to fall. Table. Yeah. It's, and it's not going to fall. You can pull it while it's on the table and it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't move. And they're made in Nova Scotia. Yeah. We know the guy. I mean, it's yeah. so amazing to get something like that nowadays that's right. handmade, super well done, uh, and he's a really nice guy, and yeah. we're just thrilled to have him. Yeah, really good quality. Yeah, so that's the Yarn Buddy. Yeah, so the Yarn Buddy and the Nosta Pin, and then this is where the pronunciation comes in. Oh. He also makes these things. <laughs> this thingy. This thingy. So I actually, it's uh, a Gaelic name. So I, I apparently, you say Gaelic for Scottish G Gaelic and Irish Gaelic is Gaelic. <gasps> so it's Gaelic. So it sounds like garlic. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gallic. Okay. Gallic. Or something like that. Close Sounds like that. our grandfather saying Gallic. Yeah. Like, if you know what a South Shore, Nova Scotian accent sounds like, oh. that's fully how they say Gallic. Yeah. So, <laughs> I fell down a rabbit hole today on the internet because um, this is a spindle, uh, an old-fashioned Scottish spindle, which apparently they think was starting to be used around in the 1700s or something like that. So very simple construction, relatively speaking. You've got this little a little knob on the on the top end. This is where it goes in this direction. And you've got this really distinctive cross on the bottom. Hmm. Hopefully we can see that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you spin it like a, a, a whirl, like a... It's not, a, it wouldn't be a top whirl, it'll be like a bottom or middle whirl because your ball of yarn actually starts to get, you gather it up on here. So um, I have never used one, but there's videos online about how you use it. So it works just like a drop spindle. And uh, except, so you, you twist it around like this. And then when, as you make your uh, ply, you actually twist it onto this and you twist it exactly like you do an pin. So it works the same as an ostapin. So you're spinning and creating the ball of a single, like a single ply at the same time, and you can ply on it. And uh, in fact, How there's is some. It? It's like there's nothing to it. I know. It's, you've it's lost amazing. me. Yeah. So you can ply your your yarn on it as well. And in fact, there was a little bit of a debate that I saw online about if it was actually used for plying. Or if it was used for spinning and plying. Okay, well, we'll link to the favorite video you yeah, found because yeah. I, I, this is, I, I have no idea. So I haven't named working. it. I haven't told you what the name right. of it is. We don't know. <laughs> so how to it's, say it. it's spelt like it would be deal again. Okay. D E A L G A N. But I literally found four different pronunciations. I know you can't count on that. Including, online. including one that started with Jill again, Jill again, like that. Even though it's a D at the beginning. It's but that so, sort of makes sense. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. And then one where the L was silent. D again. D again. D again. And then there's two F words that it's called as well. Fashish. I hope I'm not swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Festa and fashish or whatever. So there's all kinds of different names for it. And right. I'm and really so if you speak Gallic. Yes. Apparently there's... Um, registered almost like 90,000 native Gaelic speakers in the world registered, right? That's yeah. a small, a small amount. So I'm insulting. I could be insulting that right. many people, but. But know. we just don't know. And we have a Gaelic last name yes. that was uh, doctored up to yeah. seem less Gaelic, like fairly recently yeah. when they were all trying to shed their hideous culture that they were, you know, didn't yeah. want to be a part of anymore. Yeah. And the language is. You know, it's, well, it's, people want it, uh, wanted to shed it for them. Well, I don't, whichever. Yeah. Yeah. So they um, did all kinds of things to our last name and yeah. things are silent and whatnot. But yeah. that's all part of that, not having it sound Gaelic. Yes. Uh, which is such a shame. So it's, yeah. a, it's a dying anyway, language. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully it's not. There's a lot of work to try to keep it, keep it going. Not an easy one so to pick if up. Anybody, if anybody actually knows how to pronounce it, I, I looked at phonetic spellings and it still didn't make sense. So I, and there's a, there's a, actually a translator that you can do put Gaelic in. It's got almost 1,900 words in it. This was not one of them. Right. <laughs> not surprising. Okay. So I'm going with, not to be too, uh, you know, too predictable, and I'm not going to call it a deal again, because that's like really anglicizing, right. literally, phonetically reading right. the word. I'm going to say go with D again. Okay. And I'm going to go with that, but that's not the... Am I going to be able to type this in to put it on the website? What do you mean? How do you spell it? <laughs> oh, D E A L G A N. Okay. okay. Deal again. Okay. Which I just said so, I wasn't. So we're say. putting these online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so this is really something special. Okay. Yeah. You want to try something different? Yeah. If you want to try your spinner. Different. Yeah. And then um, Scott also makes these drop spindles are a work of art. Right. So the brown ones are made with walnut, the brown, uh, the brown wood, and he uses birch, and this one is cherry. So we've got uh, six of them. 
I think we have six, five, five or six of them. He hand makes the, the hook on the top. Oh, wow. So you can buy um, drop spindles in a lot of places and they often have just like a regular cup hook on, right. the, on the top and he actually hand makes the wire and he's made it so that you can easily adjust it because apparently um, depending on the way you spin your, uh, not the way you spin, but your, the, um, I don't know, your, your, your and technique, technique. Okay. your technique, you, this may or may not be in the right position, okay. although he's tried them all, all out. Um, apparently, if you're a drop spindle aficionado, the weight is important. Right. And these are, they range from two ounces is the heaviest down to one and a half ounce. So they have different, uh, different things. So we're going to, we're happy to sell, sell these and ship them, but it's kind of hard to put them online because they're all really literally individual. Yeah, handmade. they're all unique. They're all unique. So if you want one, you can let us choose one for you. Yeah. And, uh, or if you want a heavier one or whatever, and then we can write you back and tell you exactly, um, and maybe send you a quick snap of what, right. what it is and, and uh, if you, if you want them, but we have them in the shop. Yeah. We can so, sort them up or so it's just, you know, they're beautiful. Yeah. They're really, they're really. And Rachel yeah. bought one and she got started with it already and she yeah. loves it. Yeah. 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 And I put up, I did put a picture on our stories of what she had spun yes. so far on. Well, uh, you on also hers. said you were going to put some on Instagram, right? Yeah. So, so you know, I'm going to be sharing little, I always am sharing little bits. So if anything goes by that you're interested in, just direct message or email us and we can yes. sort out how to get it to you. Yeah. No big deal. Okay. So that's it. So that's Scott, Scott from Fox Mountain Spindles. Fantastic. Great. All right. So now you're going to tell your little Halloween story. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have a we have a cottage in um, on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, close to there's a little like historic village there, Sherbrooke Village. The St. Mary's River is actually quite well um, known worldwide for salmon fishing, fly fishing. It's just like right. a, um, a, a river, river runs through, through it. it. Yeah. Only Brad Pitt's not there. Yeah. No, <laughs> so mostly, mostly uh, old men with big hip waders and stuff. Right. <laughs> anyway, no, that's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. So Moving anyway, on. We, we used to go there a lot, but now we never go. We hardly ever go. Right. So we have a. It was like a an old house, the the cottage, and um, we wood stove, you know, and things like that. So we used to spend uh, Thanksgiving like there. wood stove for cooking, yeah, not wood stove for fire, yeah, yeah, and and the cast iron top wood yeah. stove, we an enterprise cooked. it was called, yeah, yeah. Cook enterprise. It, it, it. it, yeah, yeah, it was really good. And we go for Christmas sometimes, yeah. and stuff. It was really like kind of old fat. Then it was roughing it. Now we live in a house that's older. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah. There's no need to go. <laughs> no need to go. Anymore. We're rough enough. My parents still go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we, uh, we had our niece uh, with, so, uh, I don't know, you didn't come that often. I don't know why. How, is, how did that work? Because I was 16 and yeah. I had the house to myself if I didn't go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken and I and mom and dad would go almost every weekend. And we brought uh, my my sister Michelle's daughter Danielle with us one weekend, and it must have been after Halloween because she had this bag of candy, like yes. all these little candies and stuff like that. So she uh, she was there for the weekend. Somehow I don't know if it would be possible. I think Thanksgiving was like right after Halloween or something because Thanksgiving moves around the day not that little, much. No, wouldn't have been after Halloween. I don't know. No, anyway, no, possible it was after Halloween. We were there. Right. And uh, so she was eating her candy and she had uh, little bags of chips and Smarties and, and stuff. Smarties Cheesy and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> Cheetos, like that kind of stuff. So anyway, we, uh, we had a great weekend. Everybody went home. We didn't go down the, the weekend after. We went like, I don't know, two or three weekends after. And uh, so we were there and we were, Ken and I, went upstairs to and you it's a like it was a story and a half so you were sleeping under the eaves of the of the house so we were there and getting ready for bed and I he was downstairs in the bathroom I think and I pushed back the blankets and fluffed up the pillow and there was a little pile of candy and I thought oh Danielle must have left the candy there so there was like a smarty kind of 
looked like she'd been holding it in her hand. Sweaty. Sweaty little hand. There was half a Cheeto. <laughs> a couple of licorice nibs. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh, little bedtime snack. She must have left it under my pillow for That's me. Sweet. <laughs> sweet. Just like an Easter egg hunt, but yeah. it wasn't Easter. It was November. Like the tooth fairy. <laughs> yeah. So then I ate them. She ate the Cheeto was, I threw the Cheeto on the floor because I knew that would be stale. <laughs> so I just <laughs> marred it some of its color. So I it. think I threw that on the floor and kicked it under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but I ate the Smarty and the, the other stuff. Probably like some runts and those little hard banana candies and yeah. stuff like that. Okay, yeah. good. It was little, a good, right a little, little snack, snack for you. little snack. Then, unfortunately, I, after I finished eating, I put back the blanket a little bit further and there was a mouse turd. <laughs> was it left by our niece? And I screamed at the top of my lung and went, <laughs> but it was too late. It was all gone. It was all gone. Who would eat that? How hard up are you if you're eating something that's been under your pillow for two weeks? You've changed. I she left it for me. Anyway, when I screamed, Ken came upstairs. Mom and Dad came running. They were all in a panic because they couldn't understand why. I don't scream very often. I'm usually pretty calm and cool and collected. Anyway, I said, I just ate the candy that was there. So what are you talking about? I said, there was a little pile of candy that I saw. I was turned right. Anyway, and then Ken... Obviously, because he was under a lot of stress because he thought something must have happened to me, said, Kim, do you have to eat everything you find? <laughs> <laughs> See? That's my point. <laughs> anyway, it still kind of gives me the... the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually sucked by a mouse. Yeah. Carried it in its mouth and then hid it under there. And they do poop. that. I mean, that's for surely... Cash. Like, a little yeah. cash of... Yeah, treats for and you're later. seriously lucky you didn't catch something. Right. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm always looking for the positive things and something. And I was like, thank God I didn't eat that Cheeto. <laughs> because <laughs> what difference would that have made at that point? I don't know. <laughs> Gross. <sighs> oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> We're lucky we survived. Somebody really liked candy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's my Halloween story. Uh, All right. <laughs> on that note. No. Oh, no. Now, on that note, we're going to talk about the Fiber Festival. Oh, yeah. So the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival, which is the <laughs> official name now. Yeah. Um, just to keep everyone updated, it is moving along. Yeah. So we've got sort of... Um, or we've heard that some of the things are are moving along. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't yeah. know what exactly They're the working is, on a but logo. It's, it's going forward. There's like a logo being made and things like that. And of yeah. course, the date is September 25th to 27th, 2020. And yeah. it'll be here at the Delta in Charlottetown, right. Prince Edward Island. Um, and they have some rooms set aside, blocks of rooms yeah. and all that kind of thing. So it is progressing along. Not a huge update, but just didn't want anyone to think that we... Forgot about it. Forgot about it. Yeah. They're uh, they're working on it. Yeah. So So that's happening. We're very excited um, about that. And uh, definitely put that in your calendar and hopefully there'll be more details coming out soon. Yeah. I looked at some of the prices of those knitting cruises. Did I tell you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it'll be less expensive than that? Is that your pitch? (laughs) Skip the knitting cruise. Come to the PEI Fiber Festival. That's right. There'll right. be for sure a cruise ship parked right outside the window because there always is. Yeah, that that's right. Year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, there's not a knitting cruise at that particular week though. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, not a knitting one, but no. there will be ships. Oh, yeah. There'll be oh, ships. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's so many we... ships that come here. Yeah, yeah. a lot. So uh, that's a little plug for the PEI Fiber Some days three or four now. Yeah. yeah. So then... Uh, we also wanted to talk about the alternating. We got a lot of yeah. comments about Apparently alternating. Apparently we're the only two people on the planet who knit and didn't know about helical knitting. Right. And I have alternated in the round without doing helical knitting yeah. because I've never heard about helical knitting. Right. But now we've done a video on helical knitting. Yeah. Because it's, it's fairly simple. Yeah. And uh, it's a way to sort of move the chaos around. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> to keep you from getting any mar. Like I was saying, you know. The tension is tricky if you're alternating in the exact same mm-hmm. spot in the round, as I have done, unless you do it in the steak, which then who cares? Right. Um, so we'll go over to that video now. Yep. 
All right, so here we go for alternating skeins. So obviously I'm gonna use two different colors for this so that you can see what we're gonna talk about. And uh, we're gonna to try to keep this in the frame, but I have to look over Jennifer's arm to be able to do it. So we'll see how this goes. So this is my first color. I just did a little sample um, on these, uh, these needles and I'm about to join the second ball of yarn. So if you were starting this um, from scratch, you would start this sooner with the second ball of yarn, but uh, because we're doing this example, I just wanted to have a good base to start with. So I'm gonna drop the yarn that I was knitting with, and I'm going to add the second color. So we're just gonna knit like we normally would. No big deal. I knit continental, but you can see how this would work uh, Anyway, so I just get set up here. So now I'm just going to, I've just added my yarn. Have to excuse the yellow dye on my thumb there. <laughs> okay, so we'll just go around. Nothing more to see here. We'll just cut to me going around to where it starts to get okay, interesting. Okay, so here we are. I'm coming up to where I changed colors. So I've just stopped four stitches uh, ahead, but I'm actually gonna do one more. So I have three stitches um, in front of where I changed colors. So now um, here's the trick. I'm gonna drop the yarn I was working with and I'm going to slip purl-wise the three stitches. Okay, so now I'm at the stitch where the original color was. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit, pick it up, and start knitting with this color. Okay, so just going to go around again. So I'll meet you back here. So here we are again. So now I'm three stitches before I join up to where I started the brown. The white is there. I'm gonna drop my brown, then I'm going to slip purlwise the three stitches that I did at first for white. And by now you're trying to figure out how is this gonna work, but you just have to trust us and we'll see how this works. So I'm just gonna make sure everything's tight. And now I'm gonna to start to knit with the white. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop and show you how this looks. So it still looks like it's gonna be crooked, but you're gonna see how, um, how this is going to uh, work at the, as it ends. And on the back, you're gonna see that there's no, no indication that there's anything happening there, no mark on the inside or the front side of the work. So I'm just gonna do a couple rounds and um, you'll see how this will all turn out. Okay, so we're back and I just placed a split ring marker where we started just so you can see how this is, is working and I've done several rounds now and um, I'm just showing this. So I'm over here working with my brown, three stitches before I started with the brown on this row. So I'm going to slip these three stitches just like what we were doing before. And then I would keep going with the white because that's the, the yarn that I have there. But what I wanted to show you at this point, because this just keeps going around and around and around, is that the only place that you can um, even tell that there's any kind of um, changing of colors going on is just in the very, the very first row. And um, you can tell, I did a flat piece here, but if you were doing something and you wanted stripes, if you had ribbing or something like that here, this would be almost imperceptible to anybody looking at it. Keeping in mind that we were showing this because we wanted to show how to alternate um, skeins uh, seamlessly for uh, when you're using hand dyed yarns and you can see you really can't tell. So uh, you started here, this change would happen here. It keeps going all the way back, like three stitches at a time until we're all the way over here. And there's not a stitch where you out of place anywhere. And on the inside of the work, it's completely invisible as well. The only 
thing you can you've obviously got your end that you're gonna weave in where you start it and uh, the first row is a little bit uh, obvious but other than that all the way up your work you're not gonna have any kind of lines going um, vertically on your work where you're twisting yarns or, or anything like that so it's a really cool way we have to really thank uh, our uh, peeps for telling us about this because this is going to change the way that we're knitting um, with our alternating skeins as well. And if you want to do um, if you want to do stripes, uh, they're jogless except for this the one where you start and the, the one where you would end as well. But that's easily uh, um, worked into the into the pattern. You do it under in a place that wouldn't be obvious. Start it off in a place that wouldn't be obvious, and that's it. It's really slick and cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this one more time just to make sure that it's super clear for everybody. So I'm gonna back, uh, back that out. Um, so I was going around on this last round with the brown. I'm three stitches before I started that row of brown. I'm going to slip these three white stitches because that's gonna be the beginning of my white round. Okay, and I'm just gonna tighten this up a little bit. I'm getting pretty loose actually. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna be working with the white. So I'm just gonna get my thing going and I'm going around with the white again. So just if we just clarify, when you go back, the first three stitches of your change in color round are always the three slip stitches. But when you um, have the knitting all done and it, the, the stitches are all even and everything, you cannot see where those slip stitches were. They're imperceptible um, when, you're, when you're finished your work. So you just have to remember that's how, that's how it works. It looks a bit odd because you you're end up with three stitches of an alternating color, but you just keep going. It just makes sense. The yarn that you're gonna knit with is here dangling at the end of those three slip stitches pick it up and just go around and we're back okay so yay easy peasy also See, really good we barely know what we're doing yeah so really good uh there's not a lot of patterns that have uh single row stripes right for the jog reason even right. though there's lots of techniques about how to like you slip from the second row down to get rid of the jog but it's never perfect right but with this you can actually have perfectly um smooth rounds of one round stripes right as well so Wonderful. it's good for good Neat. for a lot yeah. so thanks to everybody who um wrote in with that tip yeah. and the, like i said we felt like we were the only ones who never heard of it but right. you know i just wing it yeah anyway so but this will be much better yeah very slick good okay so that was really good so that's we're happy the community to help with that if there is anybody <laughs> who didn't know yeah the community provided the answer yeah so now we have an ask us anything so this is all prompted, I guess, because we mentioned about the the our house, our old yes, house. Our had, house is infested with moths. Someone yes. wrote in and was like, your mill has moths. Should I worry about the yarn I bought? Yeah. No, no, no. So our our house, which is 160 years old, has moths. Yeah. Um, like most houses, you just yeah. don't see them. But I had plenty yeah. of moth incidents in my house in downtown or well not downtown but certainly not out in the country in Toronto as well yeah. so they are everywhere so it's important just to understand how to look after your woolens properly yeah and I was uh I had not an old house well it was like built in 1974 so not really an old house in Montreal and would take out things from time to time out of my dresser drawer which was Gross. always a bit surprising at least they didn't leave you candy yeah <laughs> <laughs> out of my dresser drawer and put it on and find like a little moth hole in it. So it's something that happens. Yeah. If you if you wear wool and um, somebody asked if you have wool blends, it, it can happen to that oh, as yeah, well. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. But there are, seems to be particular types of wool that they're more attracted Cashmere, to. Cashmere, we've talked Cashmere, about before. Yes, is, uh, is one. So yeah. the, you know, the I, I don't know, there must be a different smell like we said. They love you can't. Yeah. Take, so the trick is is to um, look after your woolens in a particular way so that you don't and what's really interesting is that the 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 larva of the moth is what's eating your sweaters it's not the actual moth itself um, are they're actually e attracted to a spot so where the holes usually are is a spot where there's some kind of organic matter mm-hmm 
So that's why. Which can be saliva that flies out of your mouth, which it's doing all the time. Yeah. I don't know if you realize. Like, you're spitting on yourself all the time. You don't realize. <laughs> Not large gobs, but there's no. stuff coming out, you know, yeah. and it gets on. And yeah. I always say to people, like, did you just think that that moth larva really needed exercise? Yeah. Because they just eat, you know, they're eating yeah. where the stuff is. Yeah. Or apple juice. Like, like if you eat an apple and it, yeah, that's a really popular one yeah or anywhere where a dog has urinated or walked with not on your clothes on your carpet if you've Carpets, got wool carpet yeah, wool carpeting yeah um, that happened to jennifer yes actually. i lost a beautiful carpet oh it was yeah. heartbreaking yeah and uh, basically my dog had piddled in the corner of it and i didn't realize it yeah but to be perfectly clear the carpet where it was clean was completely untouched yeah where um, it, it was behind a door because of course dogs are sneaky like that when they yeah. know they're doing something they shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so it was behind sort of a French door in my house in Toronto. I had no idea the pee was there and I just went to vacuum one day and I pulled the door back, which I had hoped my cleaning lady was doing on a regular <laughs> basis, which would have prevented the whole thing because also a vacuuming is a good way to keep them out of your rugs. Yeah. But apparently she didn't go behind the door either. Yeah. And uh, it was just threadbare. Yeah. I mean, there were hundreds of them. Yeah. And it was all around the urine. A hundred holes or you saw... Hundreds of live larvae. Oh, you saw And my carpet it? was threadbare. Oh, okay. Yes. oh, okay. You saw them. And if you... Yeah. I mean, if you've ever paid for a 100% wool rug, yeah. you... I've never... I mean, I've, I've, not, I've not recovered. It's, <laughs> and in fact, you paid then again to have it cut. I had it then... cut short, but it was a very organic pattern that didn't yeah. quite work out. And then honestly, the dog got into some oil that we were disposing of here. Oh, and then vomited grease up on it. Oh. <laughs> oh, you gave up. So then the carpet was gone. Like, yeah. I just, why do, why do we can't, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> but it's anyway. heartbreaking to have that happen. Yeah. So, but if it was, had been clean yeah. or vacuumed, yes. <laughs> Even. Uh, that wouldn't have happened. Right. You know, it's just, they were attracted to that organic matter that's on the wool. So people are terrified of washing their woolens. Get over it. Yeah. Either wash it or get moths in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just wash it in cold. Yeah, and you really, uh, when you're not having them in and out of your, wherever you're keeping them, you know, on a regular basis or whatever, when they're just laying there, that's the that's when something yeah. will happen. And then you know, it's like Jennifer said, there's things that are is spilling on your clothes all the time that you don't even necessarily Yeah, like notice. sweat. Sweat counts. Yes. You know. or, or, you know, how often have you dropped something and then just wiped that little yeah. spot, but you're not really cleaning it. Yeah. So, um, so there's that. And then there's the whole yarn thing. So that's also um, can be organic matter on your yarn. And it's not really, you know, when you've got huge stashes and you've got something way at the back of your stash that you haven't even, it hasn't even seen the light of day for a while. You're asking for you're trouble. You're asking for trouble. And, um, so then the question was, so the question is from, uh, it's, it's, uh, basket, she, she's a basket weaver. Yeah. So it's B S K W V R mm -hmm. is her Ravelry name. So what's the best way to store wool in plastic or in the open? So there's so, probably different advice on this. So first of all, store it clean. Yes. That's Wash. the most important part. Yes. <laughs> so in the fall or the spring, I should say, after I've, I, cause I wear wool a lot, like hand knit or otherwise, and I wash everything. So everything that's woolen that I'm gonna store for, for the summer, I wash it. And I have a front load washer. So I know we said we, should, we don't recommend this. You're supposed to hand wash it, but I do do it in the gentle cycle of my, and my some, front load uh, washers. Woolmark is on some brands of washers as a cycle. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, like there's a wool, cycle just have to be careful yeah don't uh, and all washers have a cold rinse now yes because of energy efficiency um regulations so there's no chance of you getting a hot rinse yeah so all you have to do is make sure that the wash is cold yeah do not don't don't do lukewarm don't, don't change do, the temperature yeah, yeah don't don't fiddle with it because if you go from cold to cold nothing will felt right yes right and you want low agitation yes. or no agitation. Yeah, so definitely hand wash cycle or a wool cycle if yeah. your washer has it. Yeah. So uh, so it's not really that difficult. And then um, personally, I don't put my clothing, my wool clothing in plastic. But if I if I had uh, if I was seeing moths in my house, I would I would make sure it was dried completely. And then I would probably pack seal it, it in, in a vacuum bag. Yeah, seal it in a yeah. vacuum bag. But I, um, 
I haven't done that lately, right. but I've been diligent about the washing and I haven't had any problems yeah. with my clothing. And certainly a good quality cedar chest that actually seals properly because yeah. I have a cheap one and it's cedar lined, but there's all kinds of air around yeah. the seal where things can get in, yeah. um, works. I mean, those do work. The, right. the Lane Cedar Chest used to come with a lifetime warranty. Like, if you get a moth in your clothing, they would yeah. um, replace yeah. it back in the day. So, and then about will will plastic protect against moths? So, I actually have a real a story from um, that just happened a couple months ago that I don't even think I told you about. Hmm. But when we first uh, when we first had our sheep shorn, and I learned somebody gave me a drop spindle, and then I got a spinning wheel that I decided I would shear or I would um, spin some of our own wool. Um, I had a bag of wool that was um, it was hand washed, so not as clean as it is like not like with what we how we do it. It wasn't properly scoured. It was still sort of in the grease, I guess. And um, I had it in a plastic bag. And I had an, uh, like a loose knot tied on the top of the plastic bag. And I had that behind my couch, oh. my, the, my sofa <laughs> in, my, in my living room. So that would have been like at least five years ago or so that I was there. And um, we started seeing a moth every now and then in the living room. Uh -oh. Not where I store my wool upstairs, right. which is interesting, but in my living well, room. Well, they had enough to eat in your living room, obviously. Well, no, no, no. actually, it's a, this, that's what's the good news oh, about okay. the story. So I was like, where are the moths coming from? Because, of course, now that we work with wool, so, like, if we see a moth, I, I don't know, it might, it's, it's like all hands, hands on, on deck on a five alarm. <laughs> Death spot nine. Death spot nine. Moth in the room. <laughs> anyway, so... I saw the first one and we killed it. And then the next night I saw another one. I said, okay, there's something going on. And I had spinning on my spinning wheel that had been there resting for quite a while. And I checked that it wasn't that. So I said, there's got to be something else in here. So we pulled out the couch and the bag of um, fiber fleece was there. And there was nothing in the bag, but there was a little, like two or three locks had fallen out onto the carpet. So it must have gotten ruffled around mm -hmm. and it came out. And the the moths had eaten that. Wow, you know they're, so, they're really, but the blood bag was not touched. Yeah, so you just have to protect the stuff. I mean, yeah. they're everywhere, and yeah. it's not every moth. Like if a big no. moth flies in and it's yeah. on the side of your door in the morning, that's not what we're talking about. Right. And in fact, there are pantry moths and specific and clothing moths and, yeah. that look sort of similar. One eats grains, one eats wool. Yeah, there are traps you can buy. Yeah. Some people think they don't like the scent of Irish Spring soap. I don't really have any anything to back that up yeah. but some people use that i mean anything to avoid mothballs really but the tra which are the effective but and the traps really work yes they're tra the traps so if you're concerned it doesn't hurt to put a trap in your closet lined with cedar would be really good keep the woolens clean once you're convinced that they're freshly washed put them in plastic as long as they're thoroughly dried but if you yeah. put a moth in the plastic Yes. Then it's locked in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there will be some damage. And yeah. then always with the cashmere, you know, you have to be extra careful. Yeah. But honestly, it's really the cleaning. Yes. And you can put your, if you really, really want to make sure, you can put your stuff in the freezer. Yes. But they say that it's, it should be there for three months. Yeah. But, you know, if you have a big deep freeze that you're not using yeah. and you can just, you know, you're not going to wear this stuff, that's definitely a foolproof safe yeah. bet. Yeah. And then someone else said you put it in, you take it out to let the next round of eggs hatch, and then put it in again. Oh, okay. yeah. So if I was, you know, it's just keep it clean. Mm -hmm. And agitation, like their their eggs are like dust on the surface. Yeah. So that's why the vacuuming works. Yeah. You know, like if, if it's something you're wearing every couple of days and shaking yeah. out, chances are, you know, you're going to be fine. But it's when stuff is stored stagnant. If you see something on your um, on your sweater that looks like a little patch of dust and it's just like a little patch and you flick it like that it just comes out almost like a really super super fine sand yeah that's a, those are the moth eggs that's the moth uh, eggs it's not gross or anything it just looks like dust but don't so, flick it onto the rest of your sweaters <laughs> yeah don't shake it out to the red. <laughs> anyway and if you know if it's if they're eggs they're not doing anything right and so when they hatch that the problem yeah. starts and so. the larvae are big enough for you to see I mean, yeah it's no it's no mystery but yeah. it just depends on which point in the life cycle you you catch them yeah. i mean typically by the time i find my holes they've left my cashmere sweater there's no not even a moth on. around 
Yeah. yeah, but the traps really work. So I put yeah. a trap in my room in the house. Yeah. I caught quite a few, and now I'm not seeing them every night. But, I mean, we've got holes in our plaster in our closets. And yeah. I mean, do you, do, really they're cool. in the house. I mean, we're yeah. never going to uh, we're never going yeah. to get rid of them. Yeah. So but I had I, – I would – I shouldn't say this because for sure I'm going to run into trouble. But I have had – I haven't had any sweaters attacked by moths here – but in my house in Montreal, where I never even dreamed, I, I never even saw a moth in there. Right. Then I, I was having them there. Yeah. They're, so they're impossible just, just to a, avoid. Yeah. You just, and it's yeah. Just, like Jen says, it's really the cleaning. Yeah. So that's, uh, I and hope we. that helps, but it is yeah. a bit of a hand to hand combat situation. Yeah. It's not the easiest, you know. And they'll and eat other stuff too. They definitely will eat blends. And there was something I was surprised, like when they get really desperate. Yeah. Um, and apparently crickets will eat wool. Yeah. We found out. Yes. We've maybe mentioned that. Yeah. Um, after Jeremy. Too, after the Jeremy <laughs> incident, somebody <laughs> came in and was like, good grief, you've got crickets in here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it was just one cricket, but. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they were kind so, of. So, and we take a lot of, uh, a lot of measures uh, in the mill to avoid it. Yeah. So, uh, we're trying but to you know, preemptive you, been, strikes. But you can pick moths up at a yarn shop. Yeah. You know, like they're, if you've got some yarn shop that's had stock there for yeah. 15 years and <laughs> we were uh, we were in a yarn shop yeah, actually like and that they she picked up a the owner of the shop picked up a ball of yarn it was a a hand spun yeah i think a hand spun yeah. whatever and from some firm blah yeah. blah blah she 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 and she goes oh like that yeah there was a larva on it yeah <laughs> before it was before we had a, yeah. a yarn store and we were like so, you know, like, yeah, if, no you're, if you're super concerned, just, you know, wash the stuff. If you're not right. going to use it right away, yeah. um, there's no way of knowing what you may have. Yeah. But yeah. I've never had yarn, a problem with yarn, no. like, that I've yeah. bought. But it could happen, you know, yeah. just tiny little legs and they get in, like... You know, so yeah. the important thing is to know how to look after your finished item. Yeah. Because I don't, well, I don't say most people, but you know, if you're a real stasher and you're bringing home 100% wool and just shoving it in the back of a closet for 10 years, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> yeah. Even, even though if you're not eating your apple over it. Right. Like, well, because yarn, it, it like could be in the grease. If yeah. You, like, if it's like a real heritage blend, you don't yeah. know how well it was scoured. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. But all of our stuff is scoured and then dyed at a very high temperature. Right. Um, so it's pretty clean coming out, mm -hmm. coming out to the shop. And we, we, and Lord knows it doesn't last long enough here. For no, us to that's right. It's not, handled, it's not handled a lot. Like we're yeah. making such small batches that it's yeah. turning over. Uh, yeah. But that's a good with. point too. Like yeah. someone could come in after eating a bit of a chocolate bar and touch something yeah. on the shelf in a yarn shop and you know, yeah. so <laughs> it's more just keep you up, keep an eye on yeah. it. And, and you know, we've. We leave the windows open and stuff like that, but we have the traps and stuff around. So yeah. uh, that's what we do just to to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, of course, you just mend. And we don't store a lot of fiber in here. No, we're... That's why... We're, we're, people remark often that we're one of the cleanest mills. Like, that we're yeah. very strict about not having people drop stuff off until we're ready to deal with it. Yeah. We're very strict about dealing with our odds and ends, making sure they have somewhere to go, checking everything, keeping everything in plastic. Like, we're... Right. We're, it's really, really beneficial to not have a lot of stuff um, lying around because we have wool dust. You know, we have yeah. vacuums and things that pick up little yeah. fluffs that come off the carter and it'll gather in a corner. And I mean, they, they could yeah. live happily in there for yeah. a period of time if you left it. So yeah. you have to keep it really clean. So that's clean. why when we're doing custom spinning, people are kind of like, well, can I, I'm coming over to the island. Can I just drop off my stuff? And I say, no. No. We don't because store we it. Don't store it uh, we don't store it. It goes great in the washer. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well. Yeah. I mean, not right, but we don't want it here for months no, either. That's right. Yeah. And even, even um, uh, we talked about the, right now we're spinning with local mo mohair from Prince Edward Island, but we have to, we will have to buy mohair and have bought a batch of mohair from Ontario. Um, and I'm sure it's perfectly clean when it got here, but we actually put it in a freezer. In, in our, in our walk-in freezer. Yeah. yeah just so to just to, to be safe. So, yeah. uh, we don't need it yet because we're still spinning with the Prince Edward Island stuff, but we just, we wouldn't, wouldn't even store that. And it comes yeah. from a very reputable, 
both yeah, guys. Like, just, there's no. Well, just they can get in it. Anyway, yeah, it's you know, just, just uh, we didn't even unpack it. We left the box sealed. I'm assuming it's plastic inside yeah. there, but I don't know for sure. But it's in the freezer. It's in minus twenty, so it's yeah. all good. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> a, that's the story on moss. So yeah, it's pretty lengthy, but you know, and it isn't. It, I mean, it, I don't want to sound like it's like hand to hand combat, but you do have to be diligent, aware, yeah. like pretty diligent. They're pretty determined little suckers. Yeah, their lives depended on it. <laughs> Just, I, every time we talk about it, I just get so... I think number of cashmere sweaters. <laughs> so, I, I, maybe you need to we'd start putting napkins on the front It's of too our late sweater. now. I didn't know any of this. Yeah. You know, I bought those clearly, not since I've been living here. I, mean, yeah. I bought them when I lived in Toronto. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, when you were doing no shopping, that it would matter. shopping therapy, retail shop therapy. Shopping retail therapy and yeah. LLB, you know, I was like, oh, cashmere this, cashmere yeah. that. But yeah. uh, they all have holes in them now. Every see, every last one. Yeah. And lots of uh, wool acrylic blends do too. Yeah. 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 Okay, so on that note, maybe we should have saved a funny story for after that. Sorry, that was like an onslaught of yeah. moth drama. It, yeah. <laughs> You can tell it's very, we really don't like them. No, we don't like it. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. So if you uh, if you enjoyed your episode and you're continuing to watch, you can give us a thumbs up or not. And uh, <laughs> subscribe if you uh, if you like us. And you can note, have your notifications come. If yeah, you're, yes, uh, if you subscribe, you get notified when we put up a new video. Yeah, a new yeah. video. Um, we also started putting up short videos uh, in the off week from the right. episode just as two, like recently, tutorials. Yeah, yeah we're going to do it again. <laughs> well, I think it yeah. seems to, to work. Um, we have a Ravelry group yeah. with a couple different threads. The uh, cows are there. So yes, the smitten for mittens too is still ready. Yeah, and yeah. we had forgotten to put in the, the finished object um, thread for the smittens for knit mittens too so i've Ooh. added that now and there's already some projects in there okay, it's a no chat one so right. you just have to post your picture and i am giving like little hearts so that when you i see it for the draw so yeah. you're entering for the draw and we'll put up a uh, coco knits knit along as yeah. well for your uh, coco knits pattern so uh so join us there um and but that's it it's getting dark now yeah so it's getting dark we'll see you in two weeks okay bye, bye.